the divine souls. Yesterday, I was explaining to you about Srishti, about the origin of the universe. And I explained that there are three prevailing theories about the origin of the universe, three possible theories. Number one, the universe created itself. Number two, the universe didn't have to create itself because it's always existed. Or number three, God created the universe. <clears throat> so I disproved the first two of those. In other words, I explained that the universe cannot create itself because what is the universe made of? It's made of energy. And that energy is lifeless and mindless. In other words, it doesn't have the ability to think that now I have to manifest myself into the form of the universe. So some other power has to activate this material energy. In Sanskrit terminology, we call this material energy Maya. So Maya cannot create the world on its own. It's impossible. Number two, could this world simply have always existed? I disproved that theory also using logic, that we see the things in this world, the very building blocks of this world, are all Nashwar. Nashwar means capable of being destroyed, always temporary and changing from one state into the next. Nothing permanent in this world. So when the very building blocks of the world are not permanent, how could the world itself be permanent? It's not the nature of the world. Permanence is not the nature of this world. So it doesn't make logical sense to think that this world has just always been here and will always remain. So the world didn't create itself. The world hasn't simply always been here. The third possibility is that God created the world. <clears throat> but I told you yesterday that I was going to disprove that theory also. How could none of them be true? <coughs> this world could not have been created by God in the way we think. God is involved, certainly. But he, when we say God is the creator of the world, the way that people think of God as the creator and what his actual role is are very different. First of all, understand that the three things that exist are all eternal. Aja me kam lo hit shukla krishnam bahvi praja srijamanam sarupa ajo ye ko jushamano nushete jahatye nam bhukta bhoga majonya. Shweta Shvatropanishad says that God, the souls, and Maya are all aj, 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 aja. It means unborn. They have no beginning. And they have no end. All three have existed forever. Gya, gya, udva, vaja, visha, nisha, vaja, yeka, bhog, tri, bhog, yukta, Anantashchatma Vishvarupo Hyakarta Trayam Yada Vindate Brahma Metat. Shweta Shvatropanishad again says that God, the souls, and Maya are all eternal. None of them was ever created, and none of them can ever be destroyed. They are Shashvat, eternally existing, and it is impossible to destroy them. There is no fourth thing that exists. There are only these three. God, the souls, and Maya. So if all three are eternal, meaning none of the three ever began, 
and none of the three can ever be destroyed, then what did God create? There are only three things that exist. No fourth thing, no fifth thing. Three things that exist. God, He's eternal. The souls, we're eternal. And Maya, it's also eternal. So what did God create? He never created anything because everything that exists has existed forever. God has existed forever. No one ever created God. The souls didn't create God. Maya didn't create God. And God didn't create himself because he's existed forever. But in addition to that, God didn't create the souls. And the souls didn't create themselves. And Maya didn't create the souls. The souls have existed forever. And God didn't create Maya. The souls didn't create Maya. And Maya didn't create itself because it's existed forever. So again, the question is, what did God create? Nothing. <laughs> Looking at the other side, God can never be destroyed, Maya can never be destroyed, and the souls can never be destroyed. In other words, God can't destroy himself, the souls can't destroy God, and Maya can't destroy God. Similarly, God can't destroy the souls, no soul can destroy himself, and Maya can't destroy any soul. And thirdly, God cannot destroy Maya, the souls cannot destroy Maya, and Maya cannot destroy itself. So all the three have no beginning and no end. Someone might think that that's great, that God can't be destroyed and the souls can't be destroyed, but it would be nice if Maya could be destroyed. How will we reach God if Maya is not destroyed? Well, actually, Maya doesn't have to be destroyed. Maya ka atyanta bhao kabhi nahi ho sakta hai. And it doesn't need to happen. All that has to happen is you have to be released from Maya, like a prisoner released from jail. The jail doesn't have to be destroyed. There are other prisoners still residing in the jail. Just you need to be released from the jail. So uncountable souls have been released from Maya. And Maya is still here for those of us who haven't surrendered to God in order to become released from Maya. So Maya will never be destroyed. Same thing with God. Same thing with us. Okay, this is the first point. The three eternal tattva have always been here and always will be here, so God couldn't have created anything. He didn't create us. He didn't create Maya. Yet we know that this Maya has a cyclical existence. Like I said, everything is impermanent in Maya. So Maya cycles between srishti and pralay. Srishti actually comes from the Sanskrit root word srij visarge, which means chordana, to release. So how is God involved in the creation of this world? Well, we know he didn't create maya, and maya is the upadan karan of this world. In other words, the world is made of maya. But God is the nimitta karan, meaning he's the instrumental cause. What does he do? He causes maya to change from pralay to srishti. In pralay, nothing is destroyed. In other words, maya is still there. But it's dissolved into, you can say, a subtle form, an absolutely subtle form. Like a tree which grew out of a seed and then returns back into the seed. So when it grows out of the seed, that's srishti. In other words, the physical form of the universe is manifested. And when it goes back into the seed, that's pralay. In other words, all the physical forms are destroyed, but the energy is still there. It's just in a dormant form. So, God is the one behind that cycle. He decides, okay, it's time for srishti. 
So he activates Maya and the universe is produced. And then he decides it's time for pralay and Maya is deactivated, goes dormant, and all the physical forms are destroyed, but the same energy is still there, just waiting for the next srishti. So since Maya doesn't have a mind of its own, it's not a living energy, it's a jada shakti. It's a non-living energy. Just like you know electricity, it's a power, but it's non-living. Electricity doesn't have a mind of its own. It functions in an automatic way. Human beings learn how it works, and then they draw on that power. No scientist has ever invented anything new. Just like God can't create anything new, no scientist can create anything new. What do scientists do? They research and they discover pre-existing things and they find a way to bring them out. Electricity always existed. Scientists found a way to make use of it. Nuclear energy has always existed. Scientists found a way to harness that energy and make use of it. But no scientist ever invented nuclear energy, they just discover what already exists. So Maya has no mind of its own to simply make the universe manifest. God has to do something. So what does God do? So kamayat bahusyam praja ye yeti sa tapo tapyat sa tapas tapva idagvam sarva masrijat yadidam kincha taitriyo panishad. He just thinks and it happens. Sankalpa devasya pitaraha samuttishthanti Chandogya Upanishad. He just does sankalp. God just thinks the universe should be manifested. Maya should wake up and it just happens. Ved also puts it in another way. Nishvasitamasya vedaha Bhikchitamasya panchabhutani Smitame tasya characharam suptam chasya mahapralayah God exhaled and the Vedas were produced. He looked and Maya was activated. He simply looked at Maya. So dasi raghubirki. Maya is God's dasi, his servant. So all he does is look like that. Maya khadi ho jati hai, tayar ho jati hai. Achha, srishti karun. <clears throat> but Maya can't do it on its own. But Maya is ready. God activates. Ikchater na shabdam Brahma Sutra. God looks. He doesn't say anything to Maya. Just looks. Maya is activated. Sa ikchan chakre. Ved again says God just looks. So that's all the effort it takes for God to activate Maya and produce the universe. Not a big deal for him, but no one else could do it. No soul can do it. No Mahapurush can do it. Maya can't do it on its own. God activates Maya. And this is an endless cycle. It has to be endless because Maya never began. So when was the first Srishti? Srishti, remember, means to release. When was the first time God released Maya and the universe was produced? There never was a first time. It's a cycle, right? Like a circle. Where's the beginning of the circle? And where's the end of the circle? There's no beginning and end of a circle. It just goes round and round and round. So there's no beginning to this cycle of srishti and pralay. It goes on and on. It will go on forever. And it had no beginning. There never was a first srishti. So now we understand why. On one hand, we say God is the creator because Maya could not 
create this universe on its own. Maya has to be activated by God. However, God is not the creator in this way that he created something new. No. He's simply responsible for activating Maya, which causes it to go from that subtle, formless state in which it was into this state in which we see all the forms. So nothing new is created and nothing is ever destroyed. <coughs> it's like if you go out to Long Beach and build a sandcastle on the beach and a wave comes and washes it away, your sandcastle is destroyed. The sand is not destroyed. You can take the same sand and build a new castle. Similarly, when the universe is destroyed, the forms are destroyed, but the initial energy which is in everything, which is the, the actual substance that matter is made of, that energy can never be destroyed. It's just dissolved. Like your sandcastle was dissolved, the universe is dissolved. Then again, it's manifested. Like if someone, let's say a boy in the schoolyard, plays a trick on his friends. He has a fast hand, so he sees a fly buzzing around and he catches it. And now it's just buzzing around inside his hand. He's not letting it go. He says to his friends, I know magic. I can make a fly appear out of my fist. I can create a fly. So all the boys say, oh, this is something. Let's see. Bade jadu raya. So he pretends to say some mantra, some incantation, he moves his hand around and he opens it and a fly appears and all the boys are impressed. He really did create a fly. No, all he did was catch it and release it. That's what God does. Catches everything, all the universe enters into him, then again he releases it. So this is an endless cycle. Now you understand why we say the universe has not existed forever because it keeps cycling between this srishti and pralay. We also say the universe could not have created itself because it doesn't have a mind to activate itself. And we also say God did not create the universe because what did he create? Maya has always been here. He simply activates it. So from that point of view, we can say he's the creator. Maya dhyakchena prakriti suyate sacharacharam He tunane na kaunteya jagad viparivartate gita Shri Krishna says, I am the adhyaksh of Maya. In other words, I'm overseeing and supervising everything. So I activate Maya, but Maya functions according to its own nature. And I keep it functioning like you plug a TV in. So you don't just need the power to initially turn the TV on. The power has to keep running for the TV to keep functioning. So God initially powers Maya to wake it up and he keeps powering Maya. That's why everything is functioning in this universe. When God withdraws his power, the whole thing, just like the picture on your TV, just goes <laughs> like that. The whole universe just dissolves when God withdraws his power. So now you understand how God is involved in creation. <clears throat> but there's still this question, this doubt I raised a couple of days ago about how can this Dukhmaya Sansar come from Anandamaya Bhagwan? God is blissful. He is Satchit Anand. He's the very form of bliss. So normally, for instance, the son will have many of the characteristics of the father. A human being is born from another human being. You don't see uh, an elephant being born from an ant or a rabbit being born from a lion. Lions give birth to lions, rabbits give birth to rabbits, human beings give birth to human beings. 
In other words, the characteristics are passed on from the parents to the children. So when God is on and the Mai, why is this world not also the form of bliss? We who live in this world every day know from our own experience that this world is not the form of happiness. There's a lot of unhappiness in this world as well. There's a lot of ignorance. God is Gyanamai. He's the form of knowledge. Yet this world is full of ignorance and full of suffering. How is it possible? Again, we come back to the same philosophy. God did not give birth to this world. God did not create something out of nothing. This world, meaning Maya, the Mayic energy, this Mayic energy has always existed. It was never created by God. If God created something, then you could say, okay, why did you make it like this? He never created Maya. It has existed, this Jada Shakti has existed forever. All God does is activate it and deactivate it. So it's like if you go and see a cricket game for the first time and you're not familiar with a five-day test match. And let's say you go on the second day and you're sitting there in the stands waiting for it to start. It's 10 a.m. so the match starts. And you say to your friend sitting beside you, Hey, it's not fair. This batsman who's starting off today, why does he already have 99 runs on the board? That's no fair. And why are there already two outs? <clears throat> Shouldn't they all start on an equal playing field? So your friend explains to you this is a five-day match and this is day two of the match. <laughs> that batsman made 99 runs yesterday. So when they took rest at the end of yesterday, that's how far he had gotten. So that's where he starts from today. And there were also two outs at that time. So they start with two outs today. Same thing with this world. We complain, oh, it's unjust. Why should that person have more favorable circumstances than I do? It's all carried over from the previous lifetime. God is involved indirectly because Ishwaraha Karanam Karma Palya Darshanat Nyai Darshan says that karma cannot fructify on its own. Our karma that we do also doesn't have a mind to come automatically and give us the consequence of the karma we do. God has to do that. But he does it exactly and precisely, just like the umpire keeps track of the score. Exactly like that, God keeps track of our karma and gives us the consequences. So it's all the result of what we did in the past. Surya Chandrama Saudhata Yatha Purvama Kalpayat Rigved. God simply produces the universe exactly as it was before. According to our karm, totally, completely guided by our karm, the universe is manifested. So who is responsible for the way the universe is? We are. God is indirectly responsible because He activates Maya. He makes everything happen according to the past karma of the souls, but it's not according to His Icha. It's not just on some whim that God is making this happen or making that happen. It's exactly according to our karma. So this sansar, we're going to see in a few days when I talk more about the nature of this world. This world is neither the form of happiness nor the form of unhappiness. It's a jarda shakti. It's a lifeless energy. According to our own attachments in this world, we get happiness or unhappiness from the objects of the world. And as far as the physical discomfort, illness, or comfort, pleasure that we get from this world, that is because of our past karma. So physical suffering or comfort 
is because of our past lifetimes karm and mental reaction to everything is because of our worldly attachments. So it's not the world's fault and it's not God's fault if we suffer. It's our own doing. It's our own past karma and it's our own present attachments. These are important doubts to resolve, as I mentioned. If we're trying to develop our faith in God, we have to remove all of these doubts. And this is a very common doubt. Why is there suffering in the world? If God is kind, why would He make a world with so much suffering? So now you understand that God did not make anything. Maya is eternal. And Maya has three qualities. I explained to you yesterday. Sattva Raj Tam. Sattva, the positive quality. Raj, in between quality. And Tam, the negative quality. These three qualities are innate in Maya. They're inherent. So God didn't make good and bad. Good and bad are inherent qualities of Maya. Sattva Raj Tam. Just like Maya is eternal, Sattva Raj Tam are eternal. So God didn't make Maya, God didn't make Sattva Raj Tam. <clears throat> the universe is manifested and Sattva Raj Tam are activated. That's it. Then, according to our own karma, we get more suffering or more pleasure in this world. That's it. So God is not responsible for our suffering or our pleasure in this world. It's all our own doing. And God didn't make the world a miserable place. The world has its own inherent good and bad qualities. And more good may come to someone or more bad may come to someone, but only according to their karma, not according to any whim of God. Because samoham sarvabhuteshu nami dveshyostinapriya Gita. God is samadarshi. He's totally non-biased. He looks upon everyone the same. So we can take responsibility for our own situations in this world, for our own suffering, for our own pleasure, and not blame God and not blame the world. Know that it's all the outcome of our own past karma or our present attachments which are causing us to have emotional ups and downs in the current situation. But there's another question. Okay, we accept that God did not create anything. He didn't make Maya. Maya is what it is. He doesn't make any soul suffer or have pleasure. That's all according to the soul's karma. It's not according to some random happening. But there's still the question, why did God put us in this maya in the first place? Okay, maya is what it is. God didn't create good and evil. We accept that. Good and evil are also eternal because they're eternal qualities of maya. And maya has existed forever. But God, why did you put us here? <laughs> you could have let us stay in the divine world with you. What a, what a wicked trick. That, that's something a rakshas would do. Would any good-hearted person throw some soul, go down in maya and suffer? Let's see if you can become surrendered to me. Hey, have fun in Maya where you get attached to everything and forget about God. And oh, by the way, the ultimate aim of your life is to attain God by surrendering to Him, but you'll never do it because you're too attached in Maya. Does God have fun watching us do that? So why did you put us here? That's our next question. We have all of these doubts when it comes to God. And the answer is the same. He never put us here because we've always been here. Our situation is also eternal. Just like God is eternal, Maya is eternal, the souls are eternal, 
our mayic bondage is also eternal. Sada pasyanti suraya tad vishno paramam padam. Ved says, once you attain God, it's forever. Nasapunaravartate, nasapunaravartate. You can never come back under the bondage of Maya after attaining God. So had we ever been God realized, we could never be under the bondage of Maya presently. So since we're presently under the bondage of Maya, it proves that we've always been under the bondage of Maya. And God is not cruel to kick someone out of his divine world and make them become bound by Maya. In fact, he doesn't have the power to do that. Although God is all-powerful, but he is also bound by divine laws. And the divine law is such that once a soul is God-realized, they can never come under the bondage of Maya again. They can visit the Mayic world, but even then they're not bound by Maya. <laughs> they come of their own free will, and they leave of their own free will. And even while they're here, they're still experiencing God, not the sufferings of Maya. This is difficult to grasp and accept that the situation we're in today is the situation we've always been in. But it makes sense. If you trust in God's graciousness and His kindness, you know that He could never take us from a divine situation and make us be in this material world. Why would He do such a thing? Even we wouldn't do such a thing to our worst enemy. <laughs> why, do, why would God do that to us? So we must have been under the bondage of Maya forever. But this Mayak bondage doesn't have to last forevermore. It has existed since eternity, our Mayak bondage. It's not enforced. It's eternally existing, but it can be ended through God's grace when a soul surrenders to Him. So this eternal cycle of Maya going from Srishti to Pralay, back to Srishti, again Pralay, during that time all of us have also been caught up in this cycle. Not only our own cycle of birth and death, but the srishti and pralaya of the universe. During srishti, we're active. We get birth in one species or another. We're active until the next pralaya. And during that pralaya, just like maya dissolves and stays within God, all of the souls become dormant and also rest within God. And when the next srishti comes, according to our past karma, we're given another birth and we go forth. And of course, as you know, only when we're born as human, we get the chance to perform actual karma, which is classified as good or bad. So we can go forward or backwards when we get a human birth, or we can become surrendered and attain God. One last question today. We know now that God never created Maya, and He also didn't create our Mayic bondage. We've been under the bondage of Maya forever. The next question is, why does He do Srishti? Why not just leave everything nice and quiet in Pralay? See, in Pralay, what's the situation? All those souls who were suffering under Maya, they're still under Maya, but now they're resting, and they're not aware of anything. Like if someone hits you on the head really hard and you go unconscious, you're out cold. No pain at that point. You only feel the pain when you wake up, right? So it's better to stay unconscious. During pralay, we're all unconscious. We don't know anything, we don't feel anything. Like being in deep sleep. God is still in His divine world, and those souls who have attained God are also actively enjoying bliss in God's divine world. Only those souls under Maya are dormant during Pralay. Why not just leave it like that? 
Why, why does God feel the need to activate Maya and cause Srishti to happen? Mukhyam tasya hikarunyam Shandilya Bhakti Sutra says God's every action is gracious and is for the benefit of the souls. So what possible benefit could we get out of being activated and, and being made to take birth again in this world in which we suffer so much? The benefit is that we get a chance to be born as human, which is a chance to attain God. So instead of cycling in this birth after birth in Chaurasi Lak Yoni in Maya or resting during Pralay, which is not, you know, it's a rest, but we're not enjoying anything. We're not enjoying bliss during Pralay. So this is a chance for us to attain bliss. He does Srishti only for that reason so that the souls will get a chance to be born as human. He'll provide the knowledge of the Vedas and the guidance of the saints so that the souls know they have to become surrendered to Him so they can get His grace and get God realized. And when they get God realized, their Mayak bondage is finished forever, all suffering is finished forever, and He gives them His knowledge and His unlimited divine bliss. And that's only possible for a soul to do that during Srishti. So that's why God does Srishti, to give us this golden opportunity which we currently have as a human being. So everything He does is out of His kindness and is only for us. Yet we continue to doubt. We do, but we need this knowledge. We not only need to understand it, we need to retain it and review it in our mind. When you feel a doubt coming up about God, why did God do that? You have to come back to this knowledge, make use of it, and remove that doubt so that your faith in God can continue to grow. There's one more question about souls and Maya, which is, why does Maya have the power to keep a soul under its bondage? God is Chetan, meaning He's divine and He's alive, sentient. And souls are also Chetan, and Maya is just Jada. Maya is a lifeless power. How is lifeless Maya able to keep uncountable Chetan souls under its bondage since eternity? I'll take up that question tomorrow. Bolie Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai.